This week we are testing the Pacific Ocean parameters with our hobby grade aquarium test kits. Welcome back fellow reefers. This is part two of our parameter experiment. In case you missed last week's video, we are comparing water from the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Later in the video, we will post a link for the Atlantic sample. My daughter's Air Force unit traveled to Hawaii and was able to bring back a sample of Pacific water. The water was collected from Sunset Beach. Just like the Atlantic sample, we will be testing the Pacific sample for salinity or specific gravity, DKH, phosphates, ammonia, magnesium, nitrates, and calcium. We'll be comparing the results to what oceanographers have studied and reported. With the Pacific being the largest ocean, will the results vary? First up is the salinity test. Patterns are influenced by rain, wind, as well as evaporation. Areas that receive calmer weather conditions tend to have lower salinities, while those that have harsher conditions experience less evaporation resulting in higher salinity. For our test, we'll be using the HANA salinity checker. Our sample has been sitting at room temperature. 1.022 to 1.025 is the average for the Pacific. As a result, we have a salinity or specific gravity of 1.024 at 72.1 degrees, which falls right in the middle of the average. Carbonate hardness, otherwise known as KH to hobbyists, naturally decreases through changing water levels. We will be using the HANA KH checker to test our sample. KH also plays a role in pH values by preventing pH levels to rise or fall rapidly. For our result, we have 110 ppm. Once we do the math on our calculator of 110 times 0.056, we have a KH of 6.16 which does fall below the 6.36 to 6.76 average. By using the HANA Ultra Low Range Phosphate Kit, we will be able to get a more precise result with our water sample. The phosphorus cycle is very slow. Therefore, it can often be a scarce nutrient, hindering the growth of essential nutrients needed for ecosystems to flourish. Once phosphates enter the water column, they have a life cycle lasting, are you ready for this? 20,000 to 100,000 years in the ocean. And we wonder why a lot of reefers struggle to remove high phosphates in their aquarium. The Pacific Ocean is recorded to have 0.10 ppm. As you can see here, in our case, we have 0.25 ppm, which is well above the average. If ammonia levels start to rise, it can end up being fatal to your fish, invertebrates, and even corals. It damages their exterior cells. If the tank environment changes, whether it be overfeeding or adding too many fish at one time, the bacteria you have may no longer be able and be effective until the colonies grow and ammonia levels will start to rise since there isn't enough bacteria to consume the waste. We're going to use the Salifert ammonia test kit. Ammonia levels in the ocean are recorded to be 0.05, which seems to be low considering the vastness of the ocean and all of the marine life in it. That just shows the oceans are a well-oiled machine. Now that our three minutes are up and using the color chart, we have a result of less than 0.15, but much closer to zero. We fall right in the average that we should. Magnesium tends to be one of the abundant elements in seawater, and for some of us reefers, our tanks are no different. Research shows that 1272 is the average recorded amount of magnesium in the Pacific. By using the Salaford Magnesium Test Kit, we will check our sample and see how they compare. We had 13 milliliters remaining in the syringe, which on the result card comes out to 1305. And as you can see, it's much higher than the average. We will again be using a Salifer test kit to test the nitrates 
in this sample. Nitrates are a key to having a successful marine ecosystem. The nitrogen cycle is a continuous cycle, therefore it's always happening both in our reef systems at home and in the open ocean. Average recorded levels are 0.05 for shallow areas and up to 2.5 for deeper areas. The deeper the water, the higher the nitrate to expect. Based on the color chart, we have slightly more than zero, but less than 0 0.02 ppm. Color charts can be more difficult to interpret as we all see colors differently. Based off what we are able to see, our test sample is below the average for even shallow water. Calcium is a building block for our corals, invertebrates, coralline, and is vital to their success. We have always used the Red Sea Calcium Pro test kit and today is no different. Our corals depend on calcium to fall where it should be so their skeletons can continue to grow and flourish. This is another element that reefers have to add by either a calcium reactor like we are using, a two-part solution, or frequent water changes. The ocean is able to produce this naturally. Calcium is recorded to have an average of 412.1 in the Pacific Ocean. We had 0.79 milliliters of reagent used in the syringe after the color change, and by using Red Sea's chart, we are left with 395. That ends up being a little lower than the average. Without calcium, our reefs at home, as well as the reefs in the ocean, would not be able to continue growing. We are only using hobby grade test kits, so our accuracy is limited to that. Like we said earlier, color charts and titration color changes vary person to person due to how we all process colors. We no longer have the water samples, but it would be interesting to send them out for an ICP test and get those results back for a comparison. The Atlantic Ocean results are on top of the screen for you to click to go check those out. Next week, we will close this up with the Atlantic versus Pacific showdown. How do they compare against each other? Which sample is the closest to recorded research? Also, anybody who left predictions in the comment section of the Atlantic video, we will announce the winner of the t-shirt in next week's showdown. So, until then, we will see you on the next one.